Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another all-in-one PC to take a look at, but this one is rather interesting. This is the HP Move, and it is a Windows PC, but it's got a handle on it, and you can pick it up and move it around. Additionally, you can pull the power plug out of it because it's got a battery inside of it, and it doubles as a display, so you could plug in a game console or anything else over HDMI. And we're gonna take a closer look at what this machine is all about in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this HP Move is all about. Now the price point on this is going to vary based on configuration and promotions. This one at the moment is selling for about $900. This is the top of the line unit, but it starts under $800 with lower specifications. Now the review loaner we have here has an i5-1335U processor. It has 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. The base model has an i3 processor, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. You can upgrade the storage, but not the RAM. So whatever RAM you pick is what you will have for the lifespan of the device. It has a touch display which is 23.8 inches. This is a Quad HD 1440p display. And as you can see here, the touch works pretty nicely on it. It's always nice to have touch on something this large. So you can touch the screen or you can use the included keyboard and trackpad that we'll get to in a minute. Now, because this is movable, it's not all that heavy. It comes in at 4.1 kilograms or nine pounds, depending on what measurement you choose. And as you can see here, when you pick it up, it has a stand that will automatically flip out of the way, but there are these little black pegs here at the bottom so that when the device is placed back down on a surface, those legs extend out. So you don't have to actually do anything to get it to stand up on its own. You just put it down. The handle here is quite nice. It will attach magnetically to the back when it's not in use. And there's also a little pouch here in the back for you to store stuff. It's designed to hold the included trackpad and keyboard. You just slide it in the back there and you pick it up and head out about your way here. So it might be really useful in a, maybe a school environment or something where you always wanna have a computer around. You can just pick it up with the handle here and move it. It's not all that heavy. Now the included keyboard has an integrated trackpad as you can see here. It's made out of plastic. It's got a good weight to it. It's not backlit, but I did find the keys to be quite comfortable to type on. They feel very similar to HP's laptop keyboards. You got nice large key caps with a good uh, distance between them. And there's also a good amount of key travel. So the keys press down pretty far. You get some good tactile feedback. It doesn't move around all that much on the desk. Some might have an issue with the fact that it doesn't have much of an angle to it and you can't prop it up. So if you want a steeper angle, you may wanna get a different keyboard when you're at your desk and just leave this one in the pouch on the back. The trackpad feels very nice. It's got a good amount of travel to it. So when you push down that uh, trackpad, you feel a good click as you move things around. It feels pretty accurate too and pretty close to some of the HP trackpads that are on their laptops. It is powered though by AAA batteries, four of them, and you will get a pack in the box. This should last a good long while, but you'll want to keep AAA batteries around if you plan to use this often. Of course, you could also get rechargeable triple A's, which might be the better way to go. Now the keyboard connects over Bluetooth. There's also a physical switch on it, so you can turn it off when it's in the pouch when you're not using it. And one of the things about the keyboard that I like is that it actually would work well as a standalone product. I've been using these Lenovo wireless keyboards for many years now, and this one feels a lot better because it feels sturdier with a much better trackpad. So maybe we'll see this as an accessory item in the future. Now it's got a 1440p webcam here at the top. This works with Windows facial recognition to unlock the computer when you walk up to it. It also has the ability to detect your presence. So if you walk away, it'll lock the screen or put itself to sleep automatically and then pop back up when you come back. The webcam does have a shutter on it so you can block the lens just by flicking this switch here. But like many all-in-ones, it's hard to get a good camera angle on it. As you can see here, the quality looks okay, but there's a lot of headroom and there's no way to adjust this machine because its legs are fixed. So you, you could, of course, tilt it forward here, but you'll have to hold it the whole time because there's no way to adjust its position on the desk. So it would have been nice maybe to have a little more adjustability 
on the webcam. I think you might be able to do some crop and zoom stuff through software, but that reduces the image quality. Now you don't get much for ports on this one, but you do get a few of them. On the left-hand side of the unit here, if I can keep it from swinging away from me, you've got a USB-A port and a USB Type-C port. The USB Type-C port does support external displays, so you could plug in a monitor if you wanted to have a second display connected up to your all-in-one here. You also have a volume rocker here. On the other side, we have a brightness rocker for the display brightness. Below that, you have a source button, and this is what you use to switch between the computer and the display. As you can see, I got nothing attached to it, so it's blank right now. But if I push the button again here, it will go back to the computer mode. And below that button is an HDMI port. Now, this HDMI port is input only, and it is not something that works with video capture software. So the HDMI input only goes to the display function of the screen, not capture. Additionally, if you plugged in a display to that HDMI port, it's not going to work because this is input only, not output. So just be aware of that. Uh, below that HDMI port, you have a barrel connector. And that barrel connector is for the external power adapter. It doesn't have built-in power. You've got to carry this thing around with you too much like you would with a laptop. Now on my floor here, I have a little Sega Genesis clone console that outputs over HDMI. So why don't we plug it in here real quick and see what happens. So I'm gonna plug in the HDMI. As you can see, nothing happens right away, but if I push the source button here, it will switch over to display mode and I can turn this into a monitor and still have the computer running in the background. Additionally, you can turn the computer off and still use the display so if you wanted to save the battery, you could do that. You get about four hours of battery life when the computer is on, maybe a little less if you're doing some demanding tasks on it. Um, but if you just want to run it as a display, you might get about five hours out of the display, give or take, depending on brightness levels. So you do have the ability to have this work as a portable 24-inch battery display, and you can plug whatever you want into it, and then you can very easily switch back and forth between the computer just by pushing the source button here. Additionally, if you hold down the source button in either mode, you get a menu here for adjusting some of the color and other things. These are similar features you would see on a regular uh, standalone display. Now, it does have stereo speakers on board here at the bottom of the display. They actually sound pretty good. I have found typically with these larger computers, you get a better sounding speaker given that you have more room for them. So they have decent bass, a good range of sound, uh, not bad for music, and certainly more than adequate for doing web conferences. Now, as far as performance is concerned, I found the i5 version here to perform as expected. We'll start off here with some basics. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage real quick and see how fast everything springs up. It's nice to be able to scroll around here with my fingers if I want. As you can see, things render up here very quickly and responsively as expected. This does have Wi-Fi 6 on board, so if you have a modern router, it will be able to take advantage of that. And all in, doing word processing, web browsing, and that sort of thing, I think you're going to be just fine here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 268. This puts it right in line with what I expected out of a few laptops running similar Intel i5 processors. And we also tried out a little video editing using DaVinci Resolve. We use a couple of 4K 60 frames per second clips and see how fast it can render transitions in real time. And as you can see here, it's able to keep up pretty well when you're doing basic projects. If you were doing something more strenuous like color grading or fancy 3D effects, it would be another story. So let's move on to gaming now. These machines are really not geared for gaming purposes, but you can get away with a little bit of gaming on them. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. I like testing this game because it does challenge hardware quite a bit. And I was able to get a playable frame rate of around 30 to 35 frames per second by setting the resolution of the game to 720p and having all the settings at their lowest setting. So this is the kind of experience you'll have here. You're not going to get a great AAA experience. There are games that are out more recently, like Starfield, that probably won't run very well at all. But older games will run great. Some of the retro-inspired games out there that are not as demanding will also run pretty nicely here. So it's possible to get some gaming out of this. But of course, for the best experience, you'll want a proper gaming machine or a game console. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,360. That puts this pretty much in line with laptops that I've seen running with similar hardware. So not bad 
from a performance standpoint, but again, not a gaming PC. Now we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, which puts the system under load to see how well it does over a longer period of time. There we got a passing grade of 97%. That is right on the line for passing, but it does indicate you're not going to see much of a performance drop off if you are doing things that stress the processor on here, which was nice to see. Additionally, although this does have a fan on board, you barely hear it even under load. So that's one of the nice things about these larger PCs. You've got a lot of room for larger fans that are quieter, along with more room to move the air around as well. So all in a very nicely, consistently performing all-in-one PC. Now I did try to load up Linux on this, but every time I attached my external hard drive to boot up, the system wouldn't get past the BIOS screen. So I was not able to get Linux working on here, and that is something we do like to test in our reviews. So maybe there's a BIOS update that might address that in the future, but for now it doesn't seem to be working all that well. All in, I think this is a very innovative design. I really like these feet that just automatically extend when you put it back down on the desk. That said, there's no adjustability here, so you may want to get a stand or something to put it on when you have it in its permanent position, and then of course you have the flexibility of being able to plop it down pretty much anywhere else around the house. Because it does sit, I think, a little bit low depending on your preferences, so maybe budget for a little bit of a stand to go with it. But what's been fun about looking at this PC is that it's very different from a lot of the others that we've looked at, and I've been complaining recently that things are getting kind of stagnant in the PC space, but here's something that is a little bit different. It's a computer, it's a monitor, it runs on battery if you want, and very, very portable too. So pretty neat little device, and if you're looking for something like this, I think you'll like it quite a bit. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.